So everybody, today I am interviewing Ralph Smart from Infinite Waters. So if you haven't already checked out his channel, then go and check him out. He is amazing and really inspirational, and he's been such an inspiration to me. So welcome, Ralph. Thanks so much. It's so amazing to be with you and connect with you. Thanks I'm, for having me. I feel so privileged that you agreed to being on my channel today and I'm really excited this is the first interview I've done online so yeah I can already feel the energy is really high so um yeah so I've got some questions that um I want to ask you really and I'm I kind of structured them where I'm gonna sort of say a little piece and then ask you a couple of questions about it sure. so um but the first question is I mean, is it okay to just go dive straight in? Anywhere, anywhere you want to go, <laughs> anyhow you want to take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, you often mention, you often say, on my journey. And I was just wondering if you could tell me and everybody a little bit about your journey. Right, right. Well, I've always been interested in spirituality and in becoming the greatest version of yourself. So I was always asking questions. Um, I grew up in the church, I was serving there. After uni was when it really hit home to say, what am I doing with my life? And I had always been interested in people like Krishnamurti and inspiring minds like that. But it was just a question, what do I wanna do with my life? Who am I? And after going on the journey within, after uni, I traveled around to Brazil a couple of times and it just clicked to say, gosh, we came here to be free. Why am I somewhere where I don't want to be? And then obviously after that, I had to work in some jobs out of my own choice. That's the big secret. Um, and then once I, I was working with autistic children, it was fantastic. But during the break, a woman who was a teacher she used to smoke all the time during the break and it just hit home because she had been there for five years and she was suddenly leaving. But I used to look at people's faces when they were working and I said, gosh, I don't want to turn into that. Mm -hmm. So it just made me realize that it's now or never. You're either living the dream or you're really working, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're moving further away from your true heart's desire. So I that was it. I'm at that point that you were at then, now, <laughs> and right. it's like a transitional time for me. Um, yeah, and whereabouts in Brazil did you go? Because my stepmother's from Brazil. I've been there a couple of times myself, so. Right, right. Como vai você? I went to Rio. <laughs> I also fala Portuguese. <laughs> okay, yeah. I went to Rio. They call it Rio, not Rio. I went okay. to Rio de Janeiro, um, Salvador. Uh, Fortaleza, Recife, uh, a number of different states, but it was amazing, life-changing. Mm. Okay, cool, that's amazing. It's really good to hear your story because, I mean, I knew some of it, but not all of it, so thank you for sharing. You're um, welcome. You mentioned on uh, some of your videos about how skating is, your form of, is a form of meditation for you, and I know somebody who um, says that running is their form of meditation and that they can get to um, a state of being where there's like no thoughts and they're in a higher state of consciousness through running. But I've always thought that meditation is about relaxing the body as well as the mind and I don't know I've always felt they like because he only does he only does that he only runs he doesn't do any other form of meditation and I was like concern because I thought okay running is good for you but and it releases endorphins but it's also releasing cortisol and adrenaline and right. I always thought that meditation was about like relaxing the body as well so what's your view on that and do you have a balance do you meditate sort of the usual way or right. is it just through skating right all the time a lot of the times I love going to Hampstead Heath or any any park where if I'm on holiday I like to go into nature spaces and just sit down and definitely what I love about skating is that you absorb yourself into the moment and it's not 
hard exercise. It's more like Tai Chi or something where you're breathing in the fresh prana. More so, you're stepping into your body 100%. And all our emotions are stored within the body. So the secret to unlocking our emotions is to moving into the body. I know you dance and you, you get this euphoric feeling when you're moving around. You're yeah. letting go of all of your problems. And it is meditation because there is no worry. It's just you and this awesome feeling. And yeah. you find once you come home, you've got so much energy. Definitely. Like, it's that feeling of being completely free. It's like a, it's like a free spirit kind of feeling when you're in that, in, do, in that moment, in that right in your body yeah I can completely relate but yeah I guess so you have a balance you kind of do both is that what you're saying yeah, yeah yeah I don't go to the gym I've never been into lifting weight so I'm more of doing yoga doing skating um but to each his own whatever rocks your boat go for it yeah okay um so the word YOLO you only live once right wow you mentioned this in one of your video clips and it really, really hit home to me because I used to use that saying as my excuse for being very self-abusive. Oh, well, you only live once, so, you know, I might as well just get wasted. And right. now I view it completely differently. Now I'm like, oh, you only live once in this body, so cherish it and respect it. And I was just wondering, how do you interpret YOLO? And what would you say to somebody that isn't being self-loving and using you only live once as a kind of excuse to be self-abusive? Well, a lot of the times we have to see that what we do now echoes on into eternity. There is no escape because we have to all realize that whatever we do leaves an imprint in our bodies. So you may believe in past lives, you may not, but a lot of us, we have to realize this is a never ending universe with no beginning or end. Therefore, what we're doing now is we are creating our future right now in the present mm. because there is no escape. If you overcome something, that's gonna stay with you forever. If you're in a situation, until you, until you deal with that, you're gonna have to face it, you see. So a lot of the times for a lot of us who think, you only live once we, we just have to remind ourselves that have fun because we do only live once in in the term in regards to just we may not come back as the same person you know we might come back as a different life form but right now um it's about mixing two together you know use that mentality to fulfill your dreams to get out of that job to say yeah you only live once to so do what you love you know instead of doing something which is not going to raise your vibration. See, it took me a while to kind of, actually I think this is the first time I've really spoken about the fact that I used to be a bit of a mess head to be honest, I haven't really like let anybody know that yet. But um, yeah, it, it was definitely a way of excusing myself because I would kind of justify it by saying that to myself, oh you only live once so you know have fun. But now I realise that isn't it wasn't really fun it was really detrimental and like you said like it was kind of lowering my vibration so yeah I, I see what you mean like you only live once and so do things that make you feel good like really right, good right. not not uh not just things that are depleting you in the long run okay right, right. um i just got a little list here so i'm just gonna have a little look sure. at it <laughs> um Oh yeah, you mentioned that uh, people are desensitized and this is something that also hit home to me because since I have really started to um, fully commit to this journey and choose self-love and start remembering and honoring my innate knowledge, I have become ridiculously sensitive like annoyingly sensitive to yeah, things yeah and um i've been called a wussy but you know with a p at the front <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and it's like it's annoying because i i guess i can't eat certain foods that i used to eat and you know alcohol i ca i cannot drink it it makes me feel so bad now and 
I mean, some people might say that's just my age, but I know it's not. And um, I guess like a lot of people think, oh, if you're following a spiritual path and and everything, that it's all going to be love and light and easy and whatever. But it's really, it's, it really can be like when you first start having the, this awareness, it can be really overwhelming and like, whoa, what's going on? Like, right. why am I suddenly so sensitive to everything? And I guess my question is, what what can you say to people about this path that might make it make that aspect of it easier for them? Because and did you find that that happened with you, or is it something? Oh that you've yeah, always <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. A lot of us we have to see that we are sensitive for a reason because now we are opening up our third eye. We're able to see through the Maya, the illusion. Shakespeare said the whole world is a stage and we're all actors. So once you begin to see that, much of what we thought was true is actually an illusion. You begin to laugh. You be begin to become sensitive also to your inner oracle, which is your heart space. And as well, what happens is you just see that everything you do we have to take 100% responsibility. And it's hard, it's gonna be hard being sensitive because you may change your diet and friends and family will say, oh my gosh, what are you doing? So why I say take responsibility for how you feel because that's where self-love comes into place, where you realize that nobody has control of your inner condition, of your inner emotions. You are an architect, you're an alchemist, so you have to take 100% responsibility for your uh, internal conditions. It's nobody's job to love you, mm. only for you to love yourself 100%. And once you do that, you can even honor everyone who comes into your existence. But exactly. what happens is a lot of people who are sensitive, uh, they don't love themselves. They're missing that key ingredient. A lot of people who are insensitive, they have, they may not love themselves, but they have a confidence. So what happens is once you are sensitive, that's your greatest strength. But you see with everything, you have to fuse the two together. You have to be sensitive, but you also have to know thyself. More so, you have to be confident, which is trusting yourself. Definitely. And do you know what I found since I started to honor my feelings and my sensitivities? I've actually become more of an example to other people and now right. people are coming to me for advice and <laughs> like that and it's like right. okay so it kind of has a knock-on effect and you honoring yourself um, other people really respect that and if I say to people no I don't I don't want to drink I'm not gonna drink tonight and other people actually respect that in the long run and they and you know makes them think about oh what am I doing to me to myself and I've had people sort of come to me for advice now, so I think it's good to honor your sensitivities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you see, on a deeper level, you see, the more people are in the process of becoming the greatest version of themselves, you surround yourself with people who share your same dream and vision. Mm -hmm. See, what happens with a lot of sensitive people, they're in the wrong environment to begin with, and, and that's why I say take responsibility, because the people we're interacting with we are choosing to be with them. So we can't blame anybody because we have to honor our own vibration to say, okay, am I with people who are inspiring me? I don't feel uncomfortable. You see, that's where, um, you know, we have to also be sensitive to that as well. Definitely. And I definitely had to detach from quite a few people and I, you know, because, because of that really, and I'm still friends with them, but I can't, I can't hang out in that circle because, yeah, it was going against what I knew was right for me. And I still love them and I still am friends with them, but I don't really hang out in the group situation where they're going to be doing things that I just doesn't feel right to me. So, okay. Um, my next question, actually, you just mentioned about heart space and I had a, I had a question about that. And, um, I just wanted to know how do you connect to your heart space because I actually just did a clip about my heart space and how I kind of connect in and I was just wondering like what does heart space mean to you and how do you connect to yours? Right, well it means that we have to 
move in the direction of our heart space. And that means even might be changing your job. It might be either eating healthier foods. It might be going on that holiday. Um, that's honoring your heart space. Many of us were in our minds all the time. We're analyzing. We are always calculating. And because of that, we actually end up in the waiting room of life. So once you begin moving into your body, um, you move into your heart space. So you can do that through dancing. You can do it through walking. But it's just about awareness, mm. you know, feeling that heartbeat. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I sort of just have an awareness of my heart and the um, energy around my heart and that kind of area. And that's where I get my guidance from. It comes from my heart. Like, my heart speaks to me. And I do find it really, because I've looked into a lot of um, Greg Braden's work and um, I read the book The Secret Teachings of Plants and um, it's like about shamanism and how to perceive with your heart and I find it quite sad that a lot of kind of mainstream science doesn't honor the heart for what it truly is it's just it's just a pump to them and I feel like there's a lot more to our heart than what we've been told right um, right yeah. definitely you honor your heart space by embracing the universal love energy. And this goes on into relationships because many people who are in relationships is based around ownership and possession. So once we realize it's not just about loving one person, it's about loving everything in existence, then you begin to open your heart space. You move from a personal love into a universal love. So anyone who you come into contact with who is resonating on the same frequency as yourself, then you exchange love energy. And that could be someone down the street, someone in a cafe. You don't restrict yourself. Mm. I'm gonna. Uh, I was gonna ask about something else, but now you've said that, um, I wanted to talk about relationships because this is something which um, has confused me quite a lot. Because I feel like relationships are changing, and I'm in a relationship at the moment, and there's this whole kind of idea that oh. You have to be in alignment with the person that you're with and sometimes I feel like that whole kind of idea kind of puts pressure on a relationship to constantly be in alignment and I feel like relationships kind of they go together they move apart they go together they move apart and each time you come together you're stronger than before but there's going to be moments where you're not in alignment and I don't know I just felt like this it made me question my relationship because I felt like, oh, maybe I'm not in alignment now and maybe it's not right. And and I just think, like, I don't know whether it's kind of taking away the whole being in a committed relationship. Like, is everybody just going to be opting out of relationships and just the whole world going to be in one big orgy? Right, <laughs> right. Something. Do you know, I don't mean it like that, but do right. you know what I mean? Because you ha I have so many connections with so many people and I worry that, you know, does that mean my relationship's not right? Or, um, and I just got to the point where I just feel like, well, we come together and when we're in alignment, it's so amazing that it makes up for all the times we're not in alignment. Right. You know I mean? Yes. So what's your view yes. on this? Because it's something that's really kind of confused me quite a lot. And, and I feel like a lot of people um, feel like me, like they feel pressured to have like an, a perfectly aligned relationship 24-7 and I just right, don't think right. that's possible. <laughs> well you see that perfectly aligned relationship is all about you are mine, I am yours. That's impossible. Mm. And that's what everyone is striving for. Let's get married. You know, let's let's go and, and celebrate this. You see, so a lot of the times what happens is many people put that pressure on themselves to be together all the time and to always be around each other. I mean, there's a saying that lovers are the worst thieves because they steal hearts. So it's not about taking, it's about giving. A lot of the times, once we can give freely and we can also allow the other person to share with the world, then you find that you don't have to strive for perfection. When you, you realize that the water relationship is all about supporting the other person to become the greatest version of themselves, the Coca-Cola relationship is where we want other people to be ourselves. 
So you're in a relationship and everyone wants you to do what they're doing. And what happens is a lot of people, they end up putting someone in a cage. They don't want, any, they don't want you to talk to anyone. You don't want them to talk to anyone. You're checking their phone and their email. So we have to really move past that. And once you do, you realize that there is just a natural flow, you know, because there's no resistance. It's the resistance which really causes people a lot of problems in relationships, you see. Um, it's our ideas about relationships. All of that is structure. And we have to throw all of that out of the window. And I, I guess for me, um, what you were just saying about sort of putting someone in a cage, I can be quite possessive in relationships. And I, that's because I've been through stuff in my childhood, which has, you know, it, I had really low self-worth or whatever and um, I can be quite possessive because it's like fear it's my own fear and I don't like it when I'm like that because I know that's not who I really am and I really don't like it when I feel those feelings of fear within a relationship but it's just something that's like I'm kind of going on a journey with and I think there'll come a point where I won't feel like that anymore um, I don't like to I, I want the person who I'm with to be able to express who they are fully. Um, but I do worry that perhaps I'm still a little bit like colified. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah. it's, a, it's a whole process because see many of us, we have been doing this for so long that it's very difficult. But once you embrace it one step at a time, you find you even free yourself. Mm. There's a saying, by Fritz Perls, the psychologist, the one who is in control is the one who gives up control. And, and that's what you find once you stop worrying so much, you stop trying to control, you actually free yourself. Yeah. You know, once you try and control someone else, you actually become their prisoner. Yeah, and it's weird because I'm quite, I think I'm quite needy in my relationship and I don't, I really don't like being like that, but it's not just needy, it's like, because I enjoy being around him so much, like I always want to be around him. Um, but it's nice at the same time to have that feeling. It's like um, I get so much joy from being around him, you know. So That's wonderful. And I just, yeah, and I yeah. just feel yeah. like we can go on a journey together. And like I said, it's kind of like, Sometimes we're out here, but then we come together, and every time we come back together, it's just so much stronger than before. And I feel like that's kind of the way it's been going at the moment. So I don't know why I'm saying that, but that's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So okay, thank you for your insights on that. Um, you mentioned about psychedelics in one of your uh, videos, and um. It's really relevant to me because I have, I, like I said, I used to take recreational drugs and um, I had this calling, I haven't, I haven't done drugs for four years apart from one time, um, so that's like really good for me, um, but I had this calling to, to take ayahuasca it, and I don't, I don't know why, I don't know where it came from, but it was just this nagging feeling and then loads of synchronicities happened which kept leading me to people who host ceremonies and like, I just couldn't get away from it everywhere I turned it was like ayahuasca, ayahuasca <laughs> in my face <laughs> and I was like okay maybe I need to do this and obviously I'm qualified as a herbalist and I was thinking oh maybe it's like the next step on like the herbal <laughs> thing I don't yeah. know but it just kept showing up in so many different ways um, and then I realized like I haven't done it yet but I realized like I really want to go to where the plant is grown to do it if I am going to do it and to be with the shamans who know what they're doing but um, I view ayahuasca now as a medicinal herb as a as a medicine not a drug and I was just wondering what your view on it is do you view it as a as a medicine or a drug or does it not really matter? Oh, definitely, definitely. It, it's definitely a medicine and it has so many benefits. You see, what's happened is many of us, the information we're getting about a lot of these psychedelics, 
they are there to almost shut down people's perception of reality. And because once people start taking them, people begin seeing through the illusion. So the shamans in places like Peru and whatnot, they always knew that we're living in a multi-dimensional reality. And people through the use of these psychedelics, they can also they could also experience that, oh my gosh, you know, life is not how we think it is. Uh, and a lot of the times, however, what's happened is sometimes you have to be careful as well. You don't use it as a crutch because we have to see that we have all the tools we need to create the life we desire. And once you realize that you have all the psychedelics within yourself, you see, um, in fact, um, the brain produces DMT. So once once we begin to see all of these these facts, we realize that the brain is the biggest pharmaceutical company there is on the planet. So you can even create all of these states within yourself just through meditation, just from just through going for a walk. Um, we have tremendous power. However, these plants and and whatnot are there also to show us that there are other realities beyond this one. And I always say, like, in my opinion. It's okay to use a substance, but not abuse the substance. Yes, yes. And to use it is to have an awareness of what you're doing and an intention, and to not use it to escape your reality, rather just like go deeper into it and see yes. other sides of it. But I guess I've just been in two minds about doing about going to have that experience, just purely because I haven't done anything like that. For a really long time, I was concerned that oh, if I took it, I'm going to get addicted or something, and and because I know that I like that kind of thing. But um, would you ever consider? Have you ever taken it, or would you? I, ever I haven't it? taken it, but at the same time, it's something which I definitely would be open to. Yeah. You see, and because at the moment it's not something I feel I need because. I'm already high enough, <laughs> you know, so I'm already like zoned out enough. So, um, I, you know, <laughs> but the biggest thing is that I'm always open and I realize that there is so much we haven't even explored. And it's because of fear as well through social programming and indoctrination. A lot of us, what we've been told, we always have to question it. But there is so much waiting for us to unravel. But that can only happen once we begin to move outside of our comfort zone. Mm, definitely. Um, you mentioned about habits and how a good way of quitting a bad habit habit is to replace it with a good one. Yeah. And um, I totally agree. Like that works so well. But with smoking cigarettes, I was actually never addicted to that one, so it didn't take me long to stop doing that and but for other people I've got a lot of friends who are trying to quit smoking cigarettes and they've ended up replacing cigarettes with sugary foods or junk food or or food in general and they're putting on weight and I was just wondering if you know of anything that they can substitute cigarettes for that isn't kind of food related because I've sort of said oh I've sort of said you know try meditation and things like that and try and ask for guidance and try and find your own way but I don't I don't know because it was never an issue for me right right well what happens with a lot of people who smoke cigarettes is actually a need to breathe that's why you can be with someone in work and they need to go out every every break time just to smoke because they need to breathe so a lot of the time what you find is that when you take these people to open spaces where they can breathe fresh oxygen it frees their mind. More so, you have to realize it's the lifestyle we live that creates our habits in the first place. Mm -hmm. Many of us, if you're smoking, you have to reevaluate your lifestyle, your job you're working in. Is it stressing you out? Because many people do smoke when there's, there's a lot of stress. Yeah. And then it becomes a recreational habit. So in the first place, we have to see that, ask ourselves, are we in the right environment? Ask yourself more so, do you love yourself? Because, see, cognitive dissonance is where you, 
you're doing something but you also know it's wrong so basically that split between you causes a massive imbalance so on <laughs> on cigarettes you see smoke and kill so you know in the back of the mind it does but at the same time you say well it doesn't matter we're all gonna die so you, you're creating so much disharmony you see so the best thing is to start saying okay how much do I love myself and once you get to the root of it then you can actually see there's a self-love issue I always say that every single problem goes back to self-love a lack of self-love mm. and to develop self-love you have to go to the place where you find your greatest power how many of us are waking up every day to say oh my gosh this is amazing you see yeah. that's the trick we have to begin to love what we do with a passion and put a yeah. smile on our face the open going into open space is a really good is a really good one. I'm going to suggest that to them as well because you know, I guess they didn't think of it like that. Like they're just wanting yeah. to breathe, and of course, it's it's always it's always serving a purpose as well. Like you know, they don't enjoy their jobs, so they're going out every five minutes to have a cigarette. So it's kind of an excuse to get out from doing what they're doing. So completely right, right. Your phone. <laughs> you can let it ring. It happens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so this is going to be a bit difficult to explain. I don't really know how to go about explaining it, but it's kind of about the whole new age hippie movement and how, I don't know, I feel like I made the decision, right, I'm not going to be a Buddhist monk. I'm not going to run away to the mountains forever. And so therefore I'm in this society and I'm playing this game. And to me, I feel like, there's an element of resistance sort of opting out and going to live in the mountains and I can see on one level it's really beneficial and it that that person is following their joy and they're raising the earth's frequency because they're sent meditating and sending out love and light but at the same time I feel like there's a certain level of resistance from opting out of society and to me it feels almost irresponsible for me to do that even though I'd like to do that I feel like no I want to bring what they're doing into society like that's how I feel and I was just wondering like what's your view on it do you feel like it's um it's better to go and run away to the mountains or do you think or is there no right and wrong because I really feel like it's time we bring this into society rather than going out of society. Right, right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that's what a lot of people are already doing, what you're doing, which is fantastic. You know, a lot of people are already giving information to friends and family and who are already in the system, who feel there's no way out of it. A lot of the times we have to see, we must never justify where we find ourselves to say okay I am here because of this mm. um, giving ourselves an excuse to hold on to somewhere where we're unhappy being you know we you see right now in the new paradigm this is not the age of of the martyr this is the age of abundance <laughs> the age of the martyr was okay I have to save the whole world right now in the new world is where okay I have to live my dreams because in living your dreams you actually help raise the vibration of the planet so if you are resonating with a, a tropical beach going sipping mango juice every day go for it because your overall happiness is gonna increase tenfold okay. if your heart is in helping people in a busy city go for that but a lot of the times balance is always key because living in many busy cities there's a lot of energy around which is not in harmony with the higher frequencies so a lot of the times for our own good we always have to go somewhere even if it's in the city go to a park or something you know mm. otherwise what we will find is that we will begin morphing into the very energy around us because we turn into our environment a lot of the times if we're not careful um, obviously being an alchemist you can change the energy but it's all about doing less and getting more you don't have to use that you, you don't have to use those superpowers you can just go to exactly where it makes you happy 
And in that process, you can even help people just as much. See, where you are right now is not really an issue because of the internet. You can be in London, you can be in New York, you can be in Brazil, and you can still help people along the internet or in your immediate surroundings. The question people have to ask themselves is where do I feel most alive? Not where do I think I should be, but where do I really feel most alive? And, and through that question, you may have gone to a beach once, you say, oh, I love this, but I have to go back. But that's where you really want to be, and you can be there forever. The only question is, a lot of us, we don't know how to survive in that environment because we, we're not used to it. We're so used to the hustle and bustle. So that's something we have to relearn to actually absorbing ourselves into nature. Wow, cool. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, yeah, I agree with that completely. And I think maybe there's an element of me that uh, feels a kind of duty to stay where I am because, yeah, it's kind of like a, not an obligation it's because I, I do want to help people in society like that does uh, sit right with me. I think I would like to go away to the mountains and to the beach every now and then, but I don't think I'd be at my best in that environment all the time. So, yeah. Right. No. But we also have to see that we grow through contrast. That simply means that <laughs> if you were to be placed in a beautiful beach or the mountains, you may not learn much about yourself because there's nothing to compare yourself to. So a lot of people, they have to go through a lot of hardship to get that contrast to know who they really are. You have to be in a busy city to really see, okay, I have a sensitive element. If you're in a sensitive environment your whole life, you would never know it because there's no contrast. That's so true. <laughs> um, okay, so you did an interview with, I have to mention Till Scott, because <laughs> I right. think she's right. amazing. She is, woman. she is. And yeah, and I was at her synchronization workshop. I don't, I'm not sure if you were there, were you? I was there, at, I didn't see you. Uh, I was up on the stage last. Okay, oh, wonderful. Very last, and I cried. I asked the question, how do you forgive someone who hasn't said sorry? Okay. So right at the end, and, um, and it was so weird, I knew I was going to be from lunchtime, I knew I was going to be picked at the end, and it was just the weirdest experience wow, wow. <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, she mentioned to me whilst I was on stage the reason that the word Palladian, Palladian um, resonates with me is t because two of my principal guides are Palladian. And this whole concept about um, we're from alien descent and Palladians are here to try and help us and the reptilians are going to control us. That whole <laughs> concept is all very new to me. I haven't done that search on it. I was just kind of, I know it's quite an awkward question, but just wondering what your views are about that situation, whether you believe that or whether, yeah, what are your views on it? It's not something I've looked into that much because I've, I've kind of, felt like I don't need to because it doesn't matter to me whether it, it's true or not but um, I know right. for other people it's like quite a big deal so I was just wondering what your views are. Definitely we're living in an infinite universe and we are all one but many of us we're coming from different places because that all makes up part of the composition the harmony of life so we have to realize that many people they have a mission to fulfill here. Many people have just come here specifically to, specifically to help raise the vibration. And what happens is, for me, I never get caught up in the names and dates because a lot of that is man-made as well. You know, it goes so beyond our own human comprehension, you can't even put it into words. What I will say is that a lot of people know they're not um, from here in such that they, the earth is wonderful and we shouldn't be in resistance to not being from such a beautiful place. But what I mean is that they know they are not resonating with the same, on the same frequency as the mass consciousness on the planet. Yeah. And this is a gift because there is not that many people who can see through the Maya. You see, you probably have friends and you talk about this stuff, but they don't really want to go into it. 
because they're just they want to watch EastEnders or whatever they want to talk about the football that's fine but you see a lot of people in their heart they already they could already see from when they were a child they knew something was wrong with the planet yeah they knew that it was all a big joke so you see a lot of people um you know from the constellation Pallades or the Arcturians or wherever it is you know a lot of these are names these are different star constellations so a lot of people feel they're from one of these places for me I always say that uh, that's not really so important the main thing is what you're doing right now and are you what let's see your work how are you, how are you showing this you know you're from here okay let's see the results who are you <laughs> you know yeah. let the world decide um, that's, oh sorry that's kind of the point I got to is just uh, the names and things doesn't really matter it's just how you feel and what you're doing oh Sorry. yeah yeah no that's so true and as well we have to realize that you see uh, many times and it's the same thing with, re with relationships you see a lot of people so-called from these constellations their whole view of relationships is totally different they um, would be more in an open relationship you know it doesn't have to be sexual but they they would be so embracing anyone who they who was resonating resonating on the same frequency as opposed to this 3d world where okay you're my girlfriend I'm your boyfriend all of these things now it's just limited so it's just the way how we see things you get people who are very open-minded um, just who they are because they, they're able to see life for what it really is and that's a true gift do you feel like you're otherworldly? Because I remember, I don't, I don't know whether I feel that I am otherworldly, but I remember I have always connected with, I guess it's the Palladians, because I remember as a child specifically speaking to my spirit guides. Well, I've got one who I speak, who I communicate with a lot. And I, when Teal Scott told me, that it was Palladian. I knew that anyway. It resonated right, with me right, so right. much. And I've always had a connection to that. And this is probably, the, this is the first time I've even said this out loud, to be honest. So it's quite, um, yeah, I can feel sort of tingles at the moment. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> but do you feel otherworldly or do you have a connection? Do you have, do you connect with guides or other entities or anything like that? Well, from my own experience, I, I definitely know that there are worlds beyond this one. You know, I'm able to see, I've had all kinds of experiences, personal ones, which has shown me that, oh my gosh, you know, I've actually seen, um, you know, people who, who have done things, which is, it's unexplainable. You know, for instance, a woman who was waving her hand and it suddenly like just turned into like, uh, it started to move in all kinds of shapes. So all of these experiences you can't even begin to sort of put them into human terms but you just realize first of all there's nothing to be afraid of mm -hmm. it's just a sign that um we're living in a multi-dimensional reality and the more you raise your frequency the more you also are able to see that this is a possibility because we're only seeing a very small amount on the electromagnetic spectrum, which is visible light. You've got X-ray, you've got infrared. Dolphins can hear an ultrasound, we can't. So there are so many frequencies in the universe which are out of our own bandwidth that once we begin changing our own frequency, we can have access to it because the universe is built up of information. So you see a lot of the times we just have to realize that this universe really is infinite and therefore if you can imagine it nine times out of ten it probably exists uh, <laughs> it's just everything you're saying just hits home to me completely it's brilliant um okay so um I once did this little exercise um, to help me kind of figure out what is important to me where I can't remember where I read it but it was like if you had a microphone 
that basically was connected to everybody's ears and you had three three things that you could say like you could say three words and the words that came out I was doing this while I was sort of in a bit of a meditation and the words that came to me were peace abundance and love and I just wanted to shout it from the rooftops like as loud as I could to everybody so the whole world could hear what three things or three words would you say I would say that's beautiful. I would say love. I would say abundance. And I would also say darkness. Reason why reason why I say darkness is because it's in your darkest moments that you become illuminated. You see, when we talk of peace, that's great, but it's only through our hardest times which we begin to expand. If everything is static, there is no expansion. That is why in people's trials and tribulations, they actually rise like a phoenix, because that is what we need for our inner expansion. And once you actually begin to embrace your shadow side, not see any experiences as a negative instead of as a stepping stone, you actually realize that's one of the greatest tools for alchemy. That's the raw material you need. If everything was just uh, peaceful and harmonious all the time, most people wouldn't want to do anything. But... In essence, once you begin to embrace the darkness or the shadow, you realize they are no harm to you. And in essence, there is no difference between that and the light. What happens is you transcend that duality, the mirage of separation. That's amazing. Brilliant. I like that. I like your words. Good choice. Uh (laughs) (laughs) And um, I just wondered what your views are on Russell Brand, because obviously... He had, I don't know if you saw the interview with him and Pacman, and it was right. quite a big thing in the right. media at the moment. How, did you see it? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I personally thought it was pretty awesome, but I was just wondering what your views are on him, just because it's such a big thing at the moment, and lots of people have been asking me about it, and I was just wondering if you have anything to say about right. it. I think it's wonderful just to see someone in the public eye even having the courage to say that because he doesn't have to (laughs) so he's choosing to do it and if anything it's definitely going to create a ripple effect is getting people to sort of dig into alternate research that's the main thing whatever his intentions are we will never know for sure but what we do know is it's definitely asking people to raise questions is definitely making people to to discuss things And, and that's the biggest thing a lot of the times we have to realize that like I always say, there is just so much, and a lot of people are seeing this, people like Russell Brand, the great thing about him is that he's a public figure. And that's why he can say something and millions of people will tune in. So it's just great he has a positive message because you have to ask yourself, okay, what are other people doing in his position? They're not saying anything because once you begin to talk, you could lose your job. You know, if you're a musician, you're gonna lose sponsors. So it's not an easy thing what he's doing because now he could be um, cast aside, you Mm. see, in terms of, so I definitely commend him. Um, I always say as well that right now on the planet, it's all about becoming your own star because the celebrity stars mimic the stars in the universe. So what happens is that these stars we have actually attached to our emotional states. Therefore, when a celebrity dies, what happens on the planet? everyone feels sad. Why? Because we've invested emotional energy into the star, just like the stars in the universe, which govern everything in existence. So we have to realize that you have to become the star of your own show. And once you do this, you honor everyone else's uniqueness. Because we have to see that for a long time, many of us, we've been looking for a savior or a guru. You have to become your own guru. I always tell people, right now there are no leaders. We're just standing side by side and we're elevating. And and once you realize that it's in all of us, it's just that we need to be placed in the right environment. Uh, What Russell Brand is doing is fantastic. Also other people who are speaking out, you see, um, the main thing is that what I like about Russell Brand is that he's actually going for it. You know, he's actually saying it because You see a lot of people in the new age community 
they get caught up in the love and the light and they want to shy away also from what's going on in the world which some of the stuff can be very heavy stuff to get into but what you find is that it frees you you know because you're linking the left and the right brain hemisphere to create that whole brain functioning you know it's great to be peaceful and all of these things but also you have to realize that the world we're living in it's not it's not peaches and cream mm. <laughs> as much as we as much as we would love for it to be but you have to realize you also have to know about the dark side and, and that's where you really become illuminated definitely um when russell brown was saying like well he didn't know how to go about doing this he was saying there's people out there that know how to change things and i was like oh we need to get him and till scott together because <laughs> her company <laughs> just sounds amazing and there's so many people on youtube who are you know going for it with positive world change and i just hope that we're all going to come together and there is going to be some sort of revolution or something because oh, yeah. it feels yeah. like it's building up and there's just people are just waking up all over the place people who I never even thought would even question themselves have started coming and asking me questions and I'm just like you think about this wow. <laughs> it's great it cool. is okay. it is it is it's fantastic and that's why I'm so glad you reached out because we can even work together in the future I always tell people that whatever you have to share share it never feel your voice isn't important because with each person doing their part then we create the massive ripple effect which becomes a tidal wave which can change the world amazing i yeah i it was quite a big step for me contacting you because it was just i just realized i kind of had some downloads where i was kind of just being guided to step up and just have the confidence and move through my fear and so i just emailed a few people to see if they would be up for me interviewing them and then when you said I mean pretty much everyone said yes and I was like wow this is so cool yeah. and so and this is the first one and hopefully it's not going too badly it's great great <laughs> um okay I've got um a few more kind of cheesy questions really so they're kind of more like job interview questions but <laughs> if you yeah. weren't doing this what do you think you would be doing if you weren't well, doing what you're doing, what would you right. do? Right. Well, I would be working with autistic children. I love that job. As a psychologist and criminologist, I love working, helping people with disabilities. I was working with people with Asperger's syndrome, ADHD. Mm. I love it. At the same time, I also, I may be, I do, I'm a skate instructor as well, so I love skating, teaching people how to skate. Um, I probably will be traveling as well, even more, yeah. but, <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. And um, what sort of plans do you have? Do you have plans for your future? Have you got any sort of goals or things that you want to achieve? Because we're coming to the end of 2013 and you know everyone makes their yeah, New yeah. Year's resolutions. I like to have a little list of things I want to do within the year and fun things and things like that. Is there anything that you have thought about that you're aiming to do? Definitely. Just to continue to become the greatest version of myself. Continue to help raise the, the vibration. Also connect with other people because unity is the only truth. Separation is the only illusion. So it's all about co-creating with other kindred spirits, even more so. And, and just really having fun, because the more you do it, the more you realize that we all came here to play. Um, and therefore, we just have to enjoy ourselves. If you're not having fun, then what's the point? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I try to tell people. That's why I'm, you know, I'm at this transitional point where I'm transitioning from jobs into my dream and it's like it feels scary and risky but at the same time my heart is just full of excitement and it's just yes this is what you need to do um so I'm just gonna go with that and 
I have to say, listening to you on YouTube has really helped me have the courage to do these things. And you really have helped me and I'm, and so many other people. And so thank you so much. For well, thank you. That. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, I just got um, a bit of a kind of quick fire round. So before I do that, is there anything you want to share or anything you want to say before I do a little quick fire round with you? Well, thank you so much for having me here and just to, to everyone go for your dreams and just to realize that the problem is we think we have time and that's the biggest thing a lot of people I used to work in the London clinic and seeing different patients and it's just you realize goodness gracious life is is pretty short even if you were to live 120 years it's only a drop in the ocean of infinity so what you realize is that you have to really carpe diem, seize the day, do what you love, and base your whole life around what you want to do forever. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, okay, so there's a, a quick fire round. So I'm going to ask you, what do you prefer out of two things? It's just something silly, really. So um, I'm going to say two things to you, and you just say which one you prefer if that makes sense. Sure, yeah. Yeah? Okay, ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. Veg or fruit? Fruit. Vegetarian or vegan? Vegan. Risk or stability? Risk. Relationship or single? Relationship. Palladians or Octurians? Palladians. Hot or cold? Hot. Yin or yang? Yin. The word God or source? Source. Lust or love? Love. Truth or dare? Ooh, truth. Ah, okay. Well, since you said truth, I've got one more question for you. <laughs> um, do you have any annoying habits? That's the last question. <laughs> Yeah, uh, for myself, sometimes I can see that I'm really on the internet a bit too much and I would like to even be in nature more, not become so addicted to even mobile phones and that can be my annoying habit. Sometimes I'm on the computer too long and I, I just realise I have to get, I have to go into nature, otherwise yeah. I'm not going to have a life. <laughs> oh, I know that feeling. I have um, made a bit of a a discipline that I started but it's kind of gone again now but I was like right every Sunday I would not go online and I would not have my mobile phone on um, but obviously today is a little bit different but yeah <laughs> it's really, really good just to have a day of not of not being connected to you know the internet and technology it's just good to not have that sometimes but some people right. they just can't cope without their phones can they Right. So I kind of liked it when my phone broke once because it meant I could have a break. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I completely relate to that one. Oh, thank you so much, Ralph. This has been brilliant. And I feel thank honoured you so much, to be on my channel. And, um, yeah, it's been really good. And hopefully we can connect again soon. Oh, definitely. Thank you so much for having me. And I just send you much love, peace and positivity. Oh, thank you. Okay. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Bye. Bye.